Kieran McGyver with Boxing Vance, and I'm here with the Smiling Assassin, Caitlin Phelan, Ireland's youngest female boxer. Caitlin, how are you feeling? Not too bad, how are you? Yeah, no, I can't complain, I can't complain at all. I'm lucky in this time, I have a job and everything, so uh, I can't really, uh, I can't really complain too much. But um, yeah, how about yeah. you, so you're a week away from your fight at the moment? I am indeed, yeah, I'm a week away from one of the biggest fights so far, so it's pretty exciting, just, I can't wait to just get into the ring at this stage. Mm. So, for people who don't know, right, so you're fighting Jessica Shadko, if I pronounce that right. Um, so, she's German, she's 8 and 0. So, she has the WBC Youth title, the uh, WIBA uh, world title, and WF world title. And uh, she's actually quite similar in age to you, I think. I think she's only 20, 21. Um, but yeah, she's been around six. But you're fighting her in Germany next week behind closed doors. But am I right in saying originally you were actually a late step in for the fight in September? Yeah, so originally they had an opponent announced for Jessica. And then we got a message saying, would you be interested in taking this fight? So we we're like, yeah, of course. Like, Who wouldn't want to take a big fight like this? And then the fight in September actually got cancelled. They got postponed due to the coronavirus and we got known there about a week or two ago that it'll be back on for October, so. <laughs> How did they get in contact with you? Was it through your management or whatever? Like, it's, it seems crazy that uh, they looked over in Ireland and said, right, this, this girl, Caitlin Fielding, let's, let's ask her if she'll travel. Um, do you know how it came about at all? So at first we genuinely thought it was a scam because I got a message from a guy stating he's a matchmaker saying, oh, we'd like to offer you this fight. And I said to my coach, I was like, there's no way this is real. Like surely they'd contact managers and stuff like that. But it was legit. Like he wanted to offer us this fight and he was going through back to, back and forth between us and them. And then it got through to my managers and like it was crazy at first. I was like, it's just mental the way he went through it and was texting me and I was like, shit, this is real. Like. It's unreal. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> it's actually not that. It's not that. Uh, I'm saying uh, again. I say too much in interviews. <laughs> um, but it's funny. It's not that uncommon in boxing. Like I remember running Declan's social media for a week of his fight, and. Mm. Uh, I think it was a few weeks after his fight. It was a good few weeks after, but I was still an admin on his Facebook. And similar to yourself, like a, the guy from Germany was writing to him and saying, "Look, will you take this fight against this person? We'll give you this much." And uh, it just it, sometimes that's just how it happens. Like, but um, I'm intrigued, like because when the fight then was postponed, then because originally, obviously, they might have thought. Right, well, we've got Caitlin on the hop here. She, she's going to be late notice. It's a big opportunity for her. But the thing is, she's probably going to take the opportunity, but she might not be fully ready for it in terms of training. She hasn't prepared. And making weights can be difficult. Was there any pushback in regards to you getting making sure that you were going to still going to fight her weeks down the line with more preparation? We just wanted, we stayed as positive as we could. Like we tried to keep everything as normal as we could. And when it did get canceled, we just stayed in the gym and kept improving on everything. It just gave us another chance to improve everything that we already worked on. And deep down, we all had this feeling that it will go ahead again, that it is just postponed. Because if it was just one fight that was off, then we'd be a bit worried, but the whole show was postponed. So we were like, it will go ahead eventually. All we can do is be ready and be available for when it is. And that's what we've done. So we stayed ready for the fight and we just improved on everything that I was working on. Were they, was the opposition, like, was her team reluctant at all for you to um, have so much preparation? Because originally you were just laying out, so now you have a full camp behind you. you know, so do, do, you think maybe, do you think maybe that gives you an advantage now? So 
the show got announced on Box Rec months before we actually got a message about it. And like we keep an eye on shows that come up and stuff like that. So we had a bit of an inkling that there is a possibility I could get offered this fight. Right. So we broke okay. it down. So the world title, there's only a certain age bracket for that. And when you look at it, there weren't going to fly someone in from the likes of Mexico or something like that. It cost way too much. So there was only me and one other girl. They announced the other girl as the fighter. And then they got in contact with me. So that was when things started falling into place. We're like, okay, yeah, this is going to work out. So they, they don't know anything really about me. Everything's private. My Facebook, Instagram, everything's private. Like there's no way of finding any fights out about me because everything was taken down because we'd done this a smart way about it. So literally I'm going in and they're blindsided about most of the things that I've come out with. So That's fairly crazy now that you knew that it was just between you and someone else. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's uncommon, but still at the same time, um, fairly uncommon. The show itself, it's behind closed doors. <coughs> Sorry. There... Is there, is there much of an undercard and also do you know anything about testing for, for the COVID, things like that? Like, I imagine you're going to go over there and you're just going to be completely isolated in your room. Yeah, so we're still actually waiting to find out about testing. Like, we think we'll be tested when we get there and we'll be isolated. But uh, there is uh, 200 people allowed into the actual show and it'll be like a dinner and drinks show so that everyone will be at their own tables and stuff like that. So there will be a bit of a crowd, which is a good benefit for me because it'd be great having a crowd there, but it's a little bit more pressure for her because, of course, home crowds have that bit more pressure on top of you. Mm -hmm. So we're just waiting to find out about the last few little details. We only got fights today. so as well. Have you seen much of her? Because you've said you've taken a lot of stuff down about you. Have you seen much of her at all? Yes, yeah, so me and my team actually done a good bit of research and we've been looking at her strengths and weaknesses and my strengths and weaknesses. So we do know that she will try and do the best she can. But the thing is, I will come out on top and I will be the better fighter on the night and show everyone why I deserve to be world champion. It, it, did she, I think you've, uh, you've had uh, quite an, an extensive enough amateur career. Has she had much of one? Because from the research I was looking at, it, it didn't seem like she had much um, amateur uh, pedigree behind her. Um, is that something that yeah, you... So by the look yeah, so well, by the looks of it, she started boxing in around 2015 or so, whereas I've started when I was literally five or six. So there is that big gap of amateur boxing and experience like that. Whereas people look at our professional records and they just see 3 and 0 and 8 and 0 and they're like, oh, that's a big of a gap. But not many people know my actual amateur record and how much of experience I have with it. So that is a big help and benefit on my side of things. And against it's another thing against her as well. So. In terms of the show itself, uh, the dinner show, I don't think you've ever experienced something like that, have you? Have you seen many before? Like, I'll give you an example would be Lucas Brown when he won the WA regular title against Chaganoff, I think his name is. But basically Chaganoff was the was the home for from Germany. I'm trying to remember if it was Germany or Russia. But anyway, it was the same. It was a dinner show and everyone was there just for German and he knocked him out and it was just completely complete silence in the whole place. It was the strangest winner because there was no way they could take the belt from him then. They couldn't rob him. They couldn't do anything. So um, how do you feel going into like a show like that? I know what the crowd will be against me. Like Everyone is going to be against me over there. I'm going to get booze. I'm going to probably get things thrown at me. But that just makes me even more excited because it gives me more of an opportunity to prove to them over there and to people over here that are doubting me that I deserve to win this and I will show them on the night that I do deserve it and that I will win it. Do you feel do you feel like a kind of it's a no lose situation for you because you're so young and you're kind of like the opponent going over, so no matter what happens, you, you you've you've so much time ahead of you. So do you feel kind of um, almost free going into the fight, like you've just no pressure on you because even though you are the opponent and there's like 
like there's no one really going to be no one can fly over and support you because of the restriction so it really is just you against the world do you feel like just do you almost feel like there's no pressure on you at all there's always that little bit of pressure when it comes into fighting but it's more excitement than anything like i'm just so excited to get into the ring again i haven't fought since february because of the restrictions and things like that and i'm just constantly eager to get back into the ring and fight again so it's more excitement than anything else about getting back in. I imagine, obviously, at the moment, it's it's just about beating Jessica uh, Chadkov and, and just getting the belts. But have you have you thought at all about if you win, like what would be your next step at all, or in your head and on your own, or anything along those lines? Oh yeah, I'll be headlining Goffs for a title as well when I win this fight. I've told Stephen Sharp and Boxing Ireland that that's going to happen. So. It's up to them to make it happen. <laughs> that's good, that's good, that's good. Uh, um, I was going to run through you just before uh, I go through a few questions with you, but um, obviously the three belts, look, the, there's a lot of different belts that have been created by different uh, organisations and um, there's been different champions and some of them are have their weight and they're almost like leverage for their things but like you know the wf like it reminds me of the w when ricky hatton won it and that kind of got him actually a fight against costa zoo but and the wiba but the wc youth world title is that kind of the one that really stands out to you the most because if i if i read out now the list of champions who won the youth champion so the people who won the wc youth title who have gone gone on to win full war titles? This is the this is just a list of a few of them. So Chad Dawson, uh, Chavez Jr. I'm not really surprised at that name. Uh, Timothy Bradley, Danny Garcia, Leo Santa Cruz, Devin Haney, and Canelo. So that's so is that kind of the one belt that you're you're really more so uh, gearing in towards because the ranking it gives you. Yeah, that's the biggest bet. Like, obviously, of course, it's massive to win all three, but that's the biggest one that I'm excited to have around my waist. And I, I can picture it already. I'll have the green one around my waist and the two others on my shoulders. And it's just, I can already feel them like it's madness. But I'm excited to actually be able to hold them and say they're mine because I know that's what's going to happen. So, yeah. but it is just a stepping stone to bigger and better things. And it is going to show people that I am capable of that level already, even though I am young in my career. Like people do say, oh, you're so young, you shouldn't be jumping so quick. But a baby lion is still a lion. So it's <laughs> just about just about showing them that I am able for it. In regards to your training for, for this fight, have you, have you changed anything in regards to other camps? Um, like in terms of uh, making way, uh, your preparation in terms of training and the objective of the of the training, like with Niall, because obviously you're fighting someone who's in, in this aspect. You're not fighting a, a journey woman. You're fighting someone who's um, the champion. So, how's preparation been for you in that way? So actually, preparation has gone really, really well. Like I was ready for the fight to be in September. And then just giving us that extra few weeks has just made things even better. Like I have left no stone unturned for this fight. I've a nutritionist on board. I have uh, I've been doing proper recovery. I've been seeing a sports psychologist. Like I've been going to having floats and using ice baths and just making sure everything, all them little one percent, start to add up and working on everything and making sure. Like I've been hitting PBs nearly every week with my weights. I'm hitting faster and stronger. Like everything since my last camp has been massively different, so better. Yeah, and at least at the end of it, you can always have no regrets. I think the fighters can always live with that. You know, at least if you didn't turn over, if you left something unturned. But uh, yeah. in that aspect, like it's it's always it's always it's always something at the end of a fight, no matter what. You know, I've done everything in my power. Um. There's some horror stories, obviously, from Germany, like that, like over the years, like everyone has said it. Like, you, essentially, you have to, you have to knock someone out to to, to get a draw, and um, loads, loads of stories, like um, judging, um, 
as far as even like drug testing, like like putting stuff in people's bottles on their towels to make sure they feel drug test. I don't know if you are getting drug testing there, but just loads of different stories. Um, have you been wary of stuff like that going over? And are you are you is your team very much aware of that kind of stuff? Yeah, so literally it, everything, there's been plenty of obstacles as there is going ahead with this fight. But every time something like that is thrown at us, we figure a way over and around it and get our different plans on board. Like this is a massive risk going over to this big fight. And like you said, with the judging and things like that. But if fighters look at things that way, then they'll never fight. And like it is a massive risk, but I am a professional fighter. And if I don't take big opportunities like this, I never will. And there is fighters out there that get offered these big fights, but don't actually take them. They have 101 excuses and say, oh, I need more time. I need this. I need that. But that's the difference. And that's how I know I'm going to be a professional athlete and that I'll be world champion. Because nothing can actually affect me with this fight. And if they try to throw something at me, I'll just jump over it and <laughs> knock them out. <laughs> you know, it's funny because it's good that you, when you speak, when you say it like that, it, it's... Unless you, unless you take the opportunity, you'll never really know. And it, it really reminds me of Sherelle Brown. Um, Sherelle Brown, it, she was on Mackin's Take, and she was just talking about how she got offered this Chantal Cameron fight, and she was given six weeks' notice, and she just said, oh, yeah. well, mm, like, my team don't feel the six weeks is enough for a fight of this big, and... Um, they were offering to pay for the belt fees and everything and all this kind of stuff, and... It got moved, and then eventually, then they just they, they just picked someone else, and she never got the fight again. And she was kind of saying that she was kind of blaming everything else. And Matthew Macken was like, "Well, you were given the opportunity. That's six weeks. Like that's the best you're ever going to get. Do you know what I mean? Like when you're the opponent, that's the most notice you're ever going to get. And now, obviously, a year yeah. later, Chantal Cameron's world champion, and Sherrod Brown sitting in the dark. So unless you take the opportunity, you're never going to know. Exactly. <laughs> Professionals, they, they should be ready for when opportunities like this. Like after my last fight, I got straight back into the gym, and even during lockdown, like I stayed in the gym and stayed focused because it's just a matter of getting a call saying, "Oh, you've this opportunity," and it's better to say, "Yeah, I'm ready to take it," than sit back and say, "Oh, I'm not ready," because you won't get offered again. So, what are you flying out? Uh, we'll be flying out next Thursday. Next Thursday, right? Okay, I tell you, can't wait at this stage. Just, just to get out of the country at this stage. Exactly. Yeah, I know. I'm just, I'm so excited. Like, I can't wait. Right. Okay. So, before I let you go, I just want to ask you. I just want to ask you a few questions from people that actually. When I put up from fan questions, it was actually people that knew you. It was just a few um, that knew you mm -hmm. and. Uh, Right, okay, so the first one is from from Dak and Garrity, from our lad. And uh, how great is Niall as a trainer? To me, he could be one of the top coaches in a few years in the country. If the you, best decision I ever made was yeah. join with Unitree and to join with Niall. Like, I, my training has changed since I did join with them and I would be completely lost without them, so... And it, like, because it's always hard to know how good a boxing coach is and what reason they're what reasons they're in it for. But obviously, Niall, like from I've only met him maybe once, but he seems like he's a very genuine person. But uh, with your best interests and um, even in comparison, what what's he like? So because he kind of he has boxers like yourself, and then he has he kind of looks after Gary as well, but. Obviously, Peter would be Gary's coach per se, but what would you say that they're like? Does, what's the difference in their styles from what you understand? So, like me and Gary, or Pete and well, Niall, no, or... like like from from your experience of Niall versus, let's just say, a uh, Peter Taylor or a different coaches. Like, what what is it that Niall's very good at? So the thing is with Niall is he looks out for everyone no matter who or what you are and he's there for the good of you and to try and improve you. So like when I go into the gym, he'll have things set up for me and he'll have like things right out on a whiteboard saying 
these are your goals for the session and like if I need supplements or if I'm stuck for something all I have to do is give him a text and be like yeah I have it ready for you and he'd never leave me lost or anything like that but I've after improving so much like when you go up to like some different professional gyms it's always crowded and like there's no one-on-one -on -one really whereas with Niall he focuses mainly on one-on-one -on -one or small group sessions whereas you get more work in with him and that's what I like a lot. So another person that asked a question um, was Antoine F.A. You probably know her from the Irish team uh, as well as Billy, Billy McLean. Um, I, actually yeah. met, I actually met Antoine for the first time, her and Billy, last week because they have... Well, Antoinette has started running her own gym here in Navin, and uh, it was just through chance. Um, no, I, I met them like so. Antoinette said, uh, <clears throat> "How do you find working and training for the program at such a young age compared to when you trained in the national stadium for Ireland with a full team of boxers around you? What advice would you give to other young girls looking ahead to turn and pro, especially ones that like yourself?" might not have Olympic pedigree and think maybe that, that, how can they turn pro but obviously your uh, testament to that in my style of boxing it didn't really suit the amateur style and I preferred the style of training and things like that whereas like no head guard lighter gloves things like that suited me better than being with a full squad and training with high performance I absolutely loved high performance and I had a great time when I was up there with the coaches and things like that. It just, I rattered when I turned over professional. I got in contact with Box in Ireland and they said, yeah, of course, we'll have a chat. And we ended up chatting with them and doing up contracts and talking about different ways things might go. And I haven't looked back since. The best decision I made was to turn professional because I was starting to dislike this sport and I wasn't really enjoying my training or anything like that. So that's why I decided I think it's time for a change and that change was to turn professional. And what would you be, what would your advice be to young young girls who they look at because usually a young girl in amateur clubs, a lot of them that you'd hear them talk about Katie Taylor, this Katie, and they look at the, the the Olympic team, they look at the, the, the national Irish team and, and they look at the elites, but pro, pros seem something that it's almost as if it's not presented to them like they it's not an option for them but what would you say to those young girls like one thing i was told was stick with amateur go to the olympics and just stick it out no matter what whereas i find if you tell someone to do something over and over again that just makes them not want to do it as much and it makes them dislike it Whereas if you have a love and a passion and you really, really want to do it, then you should find out ways of how you should, how you'd be able to do it and how you can achieve that goal. So my advice to any young girl out there is stick at what you love. And if things are hard, push through them because no matter what you're in, things will be hard, but there is always ways out. So just find what you love and do what you love. Um, this question here is from my actual boxing, boxing coach so it's from Padre McCullough who you probably know but I actually box in his, in his club three the boxing club I boxed up for years myself and Padre good man uh, he always has uh, shows every year for the club and he says that you fought uh, George Ryan on one of our yeah. shows in Drada. He said it wasn't no there wasn't in any decision in it, but he said it was a great scrap. Do you remember that? Do you remember those fights with Georgia? Yeah. I uh, me and Georgia boxed a few times. We always had a good tough war. We always went to war no matter what it was. It was like again we just gave each other a hug, shook hands and that was it after. Like I'd still talk to her every now and again. We'd have conversations and stuff if we saw each other. But yeah I remember I remember them fights so well. And was one of the shows up, up in Drada? Yeah, yeah. I've boxed a few times up in Drada. <laughs> um, you didn't want to ever come back. But, uh, <laughs> and uh, what, how old were you when you were boxing Georgia at the time? And, and what weight do you remember? Oh, God. So I think I've boxed her from 
aged 12 to 14 and I would have been around 60 to 66 kilos in around like those gaps. I can't exactly say, but... Well, that's crazy. That's um, th- th- There's some motivation for you there now. Like People thinking of just, if they're boxing in a small club show and draw them the queues, um, they can't, yeah. they, they're never going to be a pro, but you're a <laughs> testament to that. So, yeah. Um, I have we'll, to start somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that was good. But uh, thanks very much, Caitlin, for your time. And I actually I really enjoyed this. Um, so, you're going to be fighting obviously abroad um people will be wondering how to watch it um so do you maybe want to tell us where they can watch it if if, if there's a stream or page or anything yeah so there will be a stream that we're still waiting to get off the german guys the stream will be five euro to stream it and we're hoping to be live on my boxing page as well which is caitlin feeling pro boxer and we'll let everyone know so just keep an eye on the boxing page and my instagram page and we'll keep everyone updated on that and finally i can imagine that this show you being the opponent i can't imagine all expenses were just paid at your own pocket um were you did many sponsors support you for this fight yeah i just i was going to say can i just want to say a massive thanks to my sponsors if that's okay uh, we have a good few and I'd be completely lost without the ones that did jump on board. So uh, be Unitree Health and Fitness, ISAS Security, Coin Research, Philly Kinsla Strong Body, Strong Mind, Irish Biltong, Infinity Recovery Rooms, uh, D Armour, Schneebata Float House, Harebell Kildare Town and St. Bridget's Kildare Town. There you go. So the, yeah, the, these uh, sponsors are the, are the foundation to all these fighters for fighting abroad. So um, they they really are a, a massive help to all Irish boxers. Like so, yeah. Um. So anyway, Caitlin, can't wait. Good luck, and uh, yeah. Hopefully, uh, I will. The next time I see you, you'll have the belts wrapped around your waist. So see you soon. Hundred percent. Thanks, Thank you. Thanks.